John Reed, JDOD.com. Look who I got. I got Dennis Hallett, partner in crime, and we have David Terrar. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Our first Cloud Computing World Expo shoot. What do you think? I don't like the weather. The weather sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're in London. <laughs> what can we say? But then having said that, I mean, we should I forget the weather for a minute. I mean, we, it, we ought to have a reasonable time because it's a, a very different type of show to the ones that we usually do, right? But oh, yeah. David, you, you're better off explaining. So what can we look forward to, Dave? <laughs> right. Um, Completely threw you by yeah, talking about the weather, didn't you I? You did. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, it's perfectly all right. We, we gonna, do that all the time. You're going to edit it all yeah. out? No, not going to edit it at all. That's part of what we do. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, first, let me, talk, let me say welcome from Boston to John. It's, oh, thank yeah, you. it's a shame that the weather's lousy, but... but well, you, you're used to lousy <laughs> weather, aren't you? Yeah. It's great to hear. Let's just talk about the weather. <laughs> No, go on, David, let's go. <laughs> um, I think that uh, it, it's going to be quite a, um, an eclectic, wide-ranging show. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, different uh, you know, brands and, uh, and, and types of cloud on show. I'm disappointed that there aren't uh, as many um, enterprise apps and, and, and business apps on show, but uh, that they will be represented in the, in the speakers. We've actually got uh, some pretty good uh, CIOs of different organisations that are coming to come and, and tell their story, and that, that's, that's going to be good. Is, is that, do you think that's a reflection of um, where Europe is at, as opposed to necessarily the show itself? I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a European thing. I mean, we've got some, some great sort of European um, stories and SaaS companies here, um, you know, whether it's uh, you know Dutch companies like Twinfield or Danish companies like e e Economic, or uh, a British success story like Huddle as a, as a cloud collaboration mm. um, player. Um, so I think we've uh, we, you know, we've got the the players. It's just that this kind of conference tends to be fairly generic, and so it's the infrastructure players and the hardware players that have got the bucks to come and present at a place like this, mm. and their target audience is, is the typical CIO that's going to come along to this to mm. this show. And maybe the, the, the kind of average business buyer who, who's looking for cloud apps to run his business doesn't come to this kind of show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, something like 4,000 attendees, is that what you're expecting, or that's, even more? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm told. It's, 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 this show has steadily grown in the four years that it's been running. I guess um, there were probably about um, Two or three hundred at the show when it started four years ago, so mm -hmm. it's, it's come a long way. Mm -hmm. And what's the hashtag? CCWF. Okay. C C CCWF or CCWF twelve? Oh, that's a very good question. And CCWF twelve is what I'm using. So. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're going to have to put the hashtag on display this part of the video once we get to the bottom of I that think, tomorrow. Do you know, funny enough, I was looking for this earlier because it's not on the website, which is. Right. I should moan at them for not putting on. Well, we're doing a little bit of education here anyway, aren't we? Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so you got four thousand people coming. Why? Why do you think they're coming? What do you think they hope to get out of it? I think that there's a whole range of things. I think the um, there's still um, a, scenario, a scenario where the typical buyer needs to find out about this topic, and if they type cloud computing into Google they get 27 different definitions yeah. and, and, and so much noise. And the worst offenders are some of the big companies, the, the likes of IBM and HP and Microsoft. Um, so I think it's, it's genuine buyers who want to come and find out about the topic and, and talk to real people who are doing it. Mm. Okay. So do you want to talk about Oracle? Yeah, let's talk about Oracle. So, you yeah, come kick it off. All right, so... Oracle made uh, controversial uh, cloud announcements. Actually, it was Larry Ellison's first tweet this week, and then there was some follow-up uh, presser. Uh, why, why was there such a, a, a uproar around this thing? Well, for me, um, he stepped right over the line in the sense that um, you know he he claims a hundred applications. We don't get a list. Why? And that's we're now what three, four, five days afterwards. We've now seen a list of what looked to me a bunch of components, 47 of which have been acquired. So what have you actually built, right? I don't know what you've built, but it looks like a bunch of services. Fine, okay, so typical Oracle bending the truth. But the thing that really um, concerned me was that he, he, he made statements concerning competitors that are actually untrue. Mm. And when you combine the statements that are untrue with 
fuzziness around whatever these applications are supposed to be, you create confusion in the market. And confusion in the market is a very, very bad thing for everybody concerned. Now, I think to a certain extent we, quote unquote, the industry have ourselves to blame because cloud has been so bastardized it could mean anything from that stuff we're seeing outside, right, to other definitions. Similarly, you know, if we're talking about applications, what do we really mean here? I mean, for me, there is a very specific definition of, of what a cloud application should look like um, in order to carry you through for the 21st century, but Oracle wants to make definitions of its own. So, mm. you know, it's entitled to do so, uh, but what it's not entitled to do, I don't think, is, is to confuse the market. But, I mean, David, you've got a particular point of view on that as well. Yes, I mean, I, I think um, it's interesting to see where Larry has come from on this topic. I mean, it's only in 2009 that he was actually making fun of the cloud term. And, and actually, you know, uh, dismissing it all as, you know, why are you calling this thing the cloud when really it's just computers connected to a network mm. and it's nothing special uh, and, and, and makes fun of, of, of the likes of Salesforce. Ironically, him being a significant shareholder in the, in, in the start of the company uh, and, and helped start the company, but, but actually um, talking about uh, them moving from software as a service to cloud as just being like a fashion change. Um, I just think it's it, it's wrong. I mean, Oracle have got good enough products uh, and a good enough position that they ought to um, you know present what they've got in a positive way rather than making fun of their opposition. Mm -hmm. and, and and when it comes to then them uh, you know sniping you know, him sniping at Salesforce um, as a niche product or saying that Workday hasn't got a database, uh, that's just ludicrous. I mean, okay, it, it's not got. Larry's database, but it's just a you know, and, and this hundred list of hundred products that we've now got, mm. um, it's quite clear to me that that uh, someone's gone through subdividing an application into seventeen components right. to make sure that I've got a list of a hundred. Mm. It's not a real list of a hundred hundred cloud mm. products in any way, shape, or form. Um, so this kind of uh, attitude, I just think it's bad for business and bad for the industry. And, now more than ever, we need, we need clarity. It's a shame that we are years into the evolution of the cloud computing topic, and we're still arguing over definitions. I'm gonna take it one step further though, David, because I think, I think you're right, but I would also say that I think not only is it bad for the industry, but I don't think it's effective. I would make the argument that customers have much better BS detectors now around this stuff. And, and it's going to turn off. They talk to each other all the time about what works and what doesn't. Yeah. So you, you can't put one, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but my view is that it's ultimately ineffective in terms of your your already. The truth of the matter is that, it's, that customers are voting with their wallets. Right. And whereas back in 2008, 2009, Ellison would be, um, you know, to some extent, the, the fact that he was joking about it was, was not totally unreasonable because Salesforce at that moment in time was really selling to small and mid-sized businesses, whereas he plays in the enterprise, okay? Workday wasn't selling at all, it was barely coming to market. Today, Workday is eating Oracle's lunch. There's a list of a number of customers, I'm not gonna quote a number, a number of customers that have, have flipped from Oracle um, to, to Workday, also flipped from SAP to, to Workday, I have to say. Salesforce is biting off Oracle and SAP customers left and right. So, you know, naturally, Larry's on the back foot here. But it isn't going to work because, you know, as you quite rightly say, customers talk to customers. And these enterprise customers definitely talk to one another. Oh, yeah. I was brought up old school. I, I, my first job was with IBM. And way back then, and I'm sure it's still true now of the company, that it was actually, um, you didn't castigate the opposition. You didn't talk negatively well, about the opposition. Well, at least not in public. <laughs> <laughs> right. not, yeah. We won't talk about the private yeah. stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah, but that's that kind of thing always happens. But but for me, I mean, it's always served me well. I, I actually think that you can always talk about your product positively and highlight what weaknesses the other guys have got mm. without and, and, and actually um, you going negative on the opposition um, simply makes the the, the the customer and prospective buyer think, you know, why you know why is this guy worried? Why is he actually? Uh, and that's what that's what's going to ha happen with Larry's stance. The, the smart buyers are going to think, why is he saying that kind of thing about Workday? Maybe I'll go have a look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not to mention he's hedged his bets with his own ownership stakes in both NetSuite and Salesforce. Well, I was a little bit so. surprised that he didn't turn around and say, hey, here's the, this is Oracle's strategy, but it's called NetSuite, right? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's well, his pension plan. 
We're going to be able to follow the plot line a little bit this week because Oracle's got a booth here yes. for Oracle Cloud. Yep. And I noticed that only a stone's throw away is SAP's SuccessFactors booth. So we'll see. Perhaps we'll see. there'll be a few sparks will fly and we could go by the booth and uh, stick a mic in their face, see what they have to say. Well, we can try. <laughs> and we've got Phil Wainwright coming along, who is, who is Mr. Cloud, Mr. SaaS, who's been doing this for a lot longer than any of us in this room have. That's true. And he has a very specific position as well, so I can't wait to hear what Phil's got to say. Phil will focus on, on the multi-tenant and the architectural side of things and, and, and cut to what's really important about this. Well, he will from an IT perspective, yeah. But, yeah. Um, uh, but either way, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Well, two full days of videos. Let's do it. Okay. See you later, boys and girls. Cheers.